Hello friends, how are we doing today? It's a very exciting video, one of my favourite videos to do every single year, and that is my 2024 TBR, the 24 books that I have to read in 2024. Are we ready? Because I am not. I'm ready to cause absolute havoc. No, I love making this video. So this is my big year long TBR of books that I really want to read before the year is over. And then at the end of the year, we watch this back and we see how I did. And last year, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I read 15 out of 23. So that was pretty good. I think that's like the best I've ever done. I was pretty proud of myself, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm hoping for some success with this list. To be honest, I look at this list and in my brain I go, there's no way I'm not reading most of those books. Like I am gonna read most of those books. I'm absolutely gonna read most of those books. You're saying I'm not gonna read all those books? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. Just doesn't compute in my brain that I wouldn't read all of these books. Like I think when I make the list, Absolutely, I'm reading all of those books. So we're gonna get through the 24 books I have to read in 2024 And I just love this because it gets me excited for my reading in the coming year. I really I love this video so much <laughs> Makes me very excited. But before we get into the video, I just want to say a big thank you to Wild, who I have partnered with for this video. So I've spoken to you guys a little bit about this already, but this year's resolutions for me are all about making small changes. So I'm starting with some small sustainable swaps. Did you know that most people ditch their New Year's resolutions by the 17th of January, aka like now? <laughs> Most people give up around now. And so I'm trying to really take things slow and introduce new resolutions and new changes to my routine that are easy to keep up. So I am switching to a natural deodorant and a body wash as part of my resolution for making better choices for my body. It is so easy to stick to because I use these wild products every single day. So it's not like it's difficult to keep to it. I just use them as part of my routine. Small changes can go such a long way. Did you know that when you refill either the body wash or the natural deodorant, you you save 30 grams of plastic. Think about that over the course of the year, over the course of 2024, it'd be such a big change. And whilst natural products do not compromise on effectiveness, you have 24 hour odor protection, moisturized skin, and a very unique, lovely scents. I love the way these smell, guys. I'm absolutely obsessed. <laughs> also, Wild is powered by plants. They have no aluminum salts, parabens, or sulfates, and all their formulas are certified vegan and cruelty free. My favorite scent for the deodorant is one of the new limited Edition scents. It's linen and lilac. This scent, oh my god, it smells like freshly washed linen, <laughs> like freshly washed bed sheets that you've left out to dry in the sun. I think the top notes are linen. Then you have lilac, lavender, and jasmine as the heart notes, and amber, vanilla, and musk as the base notes. And it smells so good. I love putting this on every day. So making an impact this year is so easy and it can start with these small changes. Click on the link below and use my code 2024MEG for 20% off your entire wild order. I cannot recommend it enough and this link won't last very long. So make sure you go check out the link down below or you can scan this QR code to get your hands on a 20% discount off of your entire wild order. I cannot recommend it enough. I have loved using these so much and I feel like let me just smell it once more. <laughs> I feel like this is already making a big change to my 2024. Okay, let's begin the 2024 TBR, shall we? Are we ready? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit nervous. So the first category that we have is 2024 releases. This is something I started last year in the year long TBR because before that I'd always just pick books that were already on my TBR to show you. But I really think picking releases that are coming out this year was revolutionary for me last year because I read almost all of them because I am going to read a lot of 2024 releases this year. So it makes sense to put the ones on the list I think I'm most likely to read because it will probably take up a big chunk of my reading, right? So like I should put them on the list. <laughs> this is a little sneak peek for my most anticipated releases of 2024 video, which is coming out as my next video actually. But if I could only pick seven, there's seven here. These are the seven I am most excited for and most likely to read. So shall we get into it? Number one is The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. This is Catherine Arden's new release. I've been waiting for another adult release from her for so long. This is the author of the Bear the Nightingale series, which is one of my favorite series ever to exist. <laughs> and this is a war book, which does make me nervous because I'm not a big war girly, but I think it's to do with a brother and a sister. Oh God, do I need to look up the synopses for these? <laughs> Prepare. We didn't have time to be rehearsed. Make and it work. Make it work. Fucking make it happen. So it's set during World War One, and yeah, it's about a sister and a brother. One isn't the sister's a nurse, and she receives word of her brother's death, but something doesn't make sense about that. And then we're following also Freddie 
her brother, awakens after explosion to find himself trapped in an overturned pillbox with a wounded enemy soldier and they try to get out of it together. I don't know, listen. I don't need to know much about the plot. I just need to know that it's Catherine motherfucking Arnon, baby. I read her middle grade series. She did a middle grade horror series in between The Bare Lighting Girl and this. And I did enjoy it, but I'm just, I've been so ready for like a adult novel from her with her incredible writing. Oh my god. She is like, was one of the authors that was integral for me in getting back into reading. That series was one of the first series I read when I was getting back into reading. And so yeah, I'm very excited for this release. I've been waiting a long time for this one. <laughs> then we have got Miss Laid in Parts Half Nine by Shona Maguire. This is the next In the Wayward Children series. Again, I feel like this is a pretty safe bet. I'm caught up to date on this series, so it's a very easy one for me to just tick off and keep up to date with. I'm obsessed with the Wayward Children series, and this one, from my understanding, is very much going to be a continuation of the most recent book that we had, which was these titles, Lost in the Moment and Found, <laughs> where we met Antsy, who goes to this kind of portal world that has doors to a lot of different worlds and really expanded kind of the magic system of the Wayward Children series. And it kind of leaves on a bit of an open note. And I really think we're going to learn more about Antsy. And I think it's going to be a bit of a quest book with some of the other kids from Eleanor West School for Wayward Children in this one. And I'm very excited. I think she was just genuinely excited about fucking everything. I just love the Wayward Children series. It does something special to me. It like, mm, my heart. <laughs> It does something to me. I love the Wayward Children series. I love Sean McGuire's writing. This is like a favourite series for me, so I'm very much anticipating the next one coming out. Then we've got one of my most anticipated releases of the year, and it's The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. I am so... Guys, I don't think I don't think you can even begin to understand how excited I am for this book. Oh my god, it's like... It's lighting a fire inside me. <laughs> this is a murder mystery, but with such a fun speculative twist. Stuart Turton wrote The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I didn't love, but he also wrote Devil in the Dark Water, which I did love. So me and Stuart, I know we can get on. And this one, we're on this isolated island where I think there's only like a hundred and something people living on it. And they believe they are the last people alive in the world. There's this fog that's killed everyone else off and they are protected by some kind of sciency dome thing from the fog. But one of the scientists on the island is murdered and that sets off a timer for that protection to end in like 24 hours or something, unless they find out who committed the murder. Oh, I'm so excited. It, it is perfect. Everything that we work for is right here, right in this moment. It is just amazing. It's reminding me a little bit of The Last by Hannah Jameson, which was like a group of people, there's a nuclear war and they're holed up in this hotel and they believe they're one of the only people left alive. It's a bit similar to that, but I think this could Stuart Turton. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He always does something a little bit different. He pushes the boat out, he pushes the boundaries, and he always does something a bit different. And I just feel like this is gonna be a major slay. Uh, this could be a five-star prediction. This is like almost like, ooh, that could be my favorite book of the year. Vibes. I'm just getting the vibes from it, you know? Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited for this one. Then we have The Reappearance of Rachel Press by Holly Jackson. I'm gonna try my best. These are my most excited books. I'm gonna try my best to remember the synopsis without having to look them up. So my belief is this one. This girl went missing, Rachel Price, and a documentary is being made about it and she turns up again. She's like, hey bitch. Surprise bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. And I think it's like people trying to figure out if it's really her, what's going on, why was she disappeared, what's the truth? Listen, me and Holly, me and Holly, I'm a bit nervous for this one, I'm not gonna lie to you, because as many of you all know, the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series is one of my favorite mystery YA series. I will defend, 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 as good as dead to the death. I love that book. I think it's incredible. I think it's absolutely amazing. A lot of people don't love it. But I think it's genius. I think it's pure genius. I loved the last book in the series of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. But then last year I read Five Survived by Holly Jackson and I thought it was, it was hot trash. I'm so sorry Holly. I'm so sorry. I can't lie. I, I hated it. I hated Five Survived. I could not believe the same woman wrote both of those. So, you know, we've had mixed results. I'm a little bit nervous. But um, I believe there's something about this synopsis feels better to me. The fact that it's a documentary, maybe we'll have mixed media again. I feel like we're just coming back to what we know. And that is the correct thing to do. So I'm excited, but I'm nervous for this one, but I, I'm gonna read it either way. Then we have The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. I'm gonna have to look at the plot for this one. I can't remember it, but it's Lucy fucking Foley. <laughs> 
<laughs> Again, a lot of you know I'm a big defender of Lucy Foley. I love the guest list. I love the Paris apartment, even though that's an unpopular opinion. I didn't love the hunting party, but I read it right after I read the guest list. And it just like, in my opinion, the guest list is just a better version of the, the hunting party by Lucy Foley. But yeah, the Midnight Feast is her release this year. We don't even have a cover yet. Oh yeah. Welcome to the opening weekend of the manor, a luxury resort built on top of old secrets in an ancient wood. And then with all Lucy Foley books, we kind of have these caricatures, these, these archetypal characters. We have the founder, the lover, the mystery guest, the kitchen help, the detective, all have an agenda, all have a past, but not everyone will survive. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Listen, I feel very protective of Lucy Foley. Not a lot of you will probably know this, but I went to a, uh, like a signing, I guess, like a, like a Q and A and signing of the guest list back when I lived in Leeds. This was right before the pandemic, I believe. It was like the last bookish event I went to and I went to it and I met her and she was like one of the kindest people to ever exist. And I remember on that night, I think I hit 2000 subscribers. And it was like a big moment. Lucy Foley and me were just cosmically tied forever. <laughs> She was lovely and I just think she's a genius. I just love what she does. I love her flavor of mystery. So I'm very excited for the midnight, uh, midnight I keep calling it the midnight guest, midnight feast. Okay, and then I've got actually two romances on the list. First is Bride by Ali Hazelwood. Oh, I'm very excited. This is Ali Hazelwood's first paranormal romance. And I just think, Ali, this is what you were born to do. This is why you were put on this earth. That's when I knew that I was born to be great just destined for greatness. If you you guys don't know this about me, well, I've spoken about it a, a bit before, but basically it's like a young adult <laughs> when I was 12, 13. I just read Paranormal Romance. That was all I read. I loved Twilight. I was a Twilight girly, but that meant I read all the rip-offs of Twilight and all the offshoots of Twilight. Evermore series, anyone remember? That kind of slayed. <laughs> so I was a big, 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 big paranormal romance girly. I know that's difficult to believe now, but I was obsessed. It was all I read. <laughs> and so the fact that Ali Hazelwood is coming out with this, I just think her writing style, <sighs> I feel like she's born to do it. Do I know the plot of this? Not really. Is there a werewolf and a vampire? I'm not sure. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I just know, Ali, this is what you were put on this earth to do and I'm very excited. <laughs> and then the final 2024 release that I decided to put on this list was Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez because Abby Jimenez has quickly become a new favourite romance author for me. I have read Part of Your World and Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez and I really, really enjoyed them both. So she's just like a new romance or girly for me. Listen, I have a very small group, as we know. We have Ali, we have Talia Hibbert, we have Abby Jimenez. Is that it? Are they my girlies? And maybe Crystal Maldonado. That's kind of the romance girlies that I trust and love, you know? But what is this one about? Because I can't remember. <laughs> oh yeah! It's a dude who has a curse and every woman he dates will go on to find their soulmate the second they break up. And then the girlie is like, I have the same problem. Let's date each other and maybe it'll cancel each other out. Oh my god, Abby Jimenez, your mind. So it's a little bit speculative as well with this curse. Oh, I am so excited. I love Abby Jimenez is writing. So excited for that one. Okay, then we have 2023 releases as the next category. Some 2023 releases I did not get around to last year. I mean, there's a lot of 2023 releases I didn't get around to last year that I want to read. There's so many books, not enough time is essentially the problem. So first we have got Shark Heart by Emily Habeck. This is one I hadn't heard a ton about, but when I was looking through, I did a live show where I was looking through the Goodreads Choice Awards nominees with my patrons and I saw the plot of this and I was just instantly obsessed. So we've got this couple who have just been married for a few weeks and the guy receives a rare diagnosis. He will retain most of his consciousness, memories and intellect, but his physical body will gradually turn into a great white shark. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I am so excited to read this. Also, this is a lot of really short chapters. Like we just have like a paragraph on a page in some cases. And so I'm really looking forward to the pacing of this. I think it's gonna be emotional. I am really excited. This is my kind of weird where it's like, I think this is also could be an entry level. From what I've heard, it's like not too weird. It's just a little bit weird. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm so excited for this one. This is, this is like a five star prediction. I think I'm gonna love this one. Then we have Just Another Missing Person by Gillian McAllister. I loved Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jenny McAllister. I thought it was incredible. I haven't heard as good things about this one, but I think I'm still really gonna enjoy it. So we have Olivia, who's 22, no history of running away, last seen on CCTV entering a dead end alley and not coming back out again, missing for one day and counting. I'm just gonna read you out the synopsis because I think it's such a good synopsis. Julia is the detective heading up the case. She knows what to expect, a desperate family, a ticking clock and long hours away from her daughter. But Julia has no idea how close to home it's going to get because her family's safety depends on one thing. Julia must not find out what happened to Olivia. 
The drama. The drama. I like drama. Drama drives me at times because I think without drama, what's the fun in life? So I don't know if she knows that she can't find out what happened to her if she doesn't know. I'm not really sure. The synopsis doesn't give too much away, but I really enjoyed the writing in Wrong Place, Wrong Time. I thought it was such a fresh, imaginative take on like a murder mystery. I'm so excited to read this one. Janine McAllister could become an author by favourite mystery thriller author for me. I know she also has like quite a lot of backlists. Like Wrong Place, Wrong Time wasn't her debut, it was kind of her breakout. So she has got a lot of backlists I could dive into if I start really enjoying her books. But for now, I'm just picking up her latest releases. I just think this is gonna be twisty turny. A lot of fun. Then you guys know I had to put Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Bowdry on here. I loved Legend of Lattes last year. It was my second favourite book of the year. And this is the prequel. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling nervous. Everyone, I'm feeling nervous because I'm scared I'm not, like, what if I don't love it as much as Legend of Lattes? Like, that's a real possibility and it really terrifies me. It really, it's very scary. It's very scary. <laughs> Petrified. <laughs> But yeah, this one is when Viv, I think, is still kind of like soldiering, you know, and she um, spends her hours at a struggling bookshop in the company of its foul mouthed proprietor. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, it's set in a bookshop and there's a little mouse, and there's a little dog owl. What? <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm just trying to temper my expectations, but I'm obviously going to read this this year. If I haven't read this one by the end of the year, we've got problems. Another obvious choice is Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. I could read this this second, right? But I'm saving it to read it with you. And I haven't got a video coming up in like the next month that <laughs> this really goes in. But I love the Heartstopper graphic novel series. I feel like it used to be my thing and now it's everyone's thing and I'm a little bit like clear off, you know what I mean? Get out of here. I love Nick and Charlie so much and this is our penultimate one. There's only gonna be one more after this and it makes me upset but I think Alice Oseman, oh these books feel so real. They feel so real to remember what it's like to be in love and to that young love and that excitement and that nervousness and I just think it's so wholesome and beautiful and I just I just love it. Then we have Monstrilio which you guys if you've watched my most recent video where I picked my first book of the year based on the first chapter this was one of the options it didn't end up winning but I am very intrigued by it. We're following a woman whose son has passed away and she takes a piece of his lung when he dies, she like carves him open and like cuts off a bit of his lung and then the lung grows into like this little creature. I think that they call Monstrilio. A little bit weird, it's getting a little bit weird in here. Is there anyone concerned? I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> but I thought the writing at the start of this, it dove straight into it in that first chapter and the writing was something very different and very special. So this is definitely one I'm, I'm gonna get around to this year. I'm gonna get around to this year. This, this list, impenetrable. Absolutely, I'm gonna read all of these. What, are you kidding me? I'm absolutely gonna read all these books. <laughs> I just think she's very delusional and maybe possibly insane. And then the last on the 2023 releases list, I think there might be some books in the next category that technically could go in this list, but like, they're a different category anyway. The last is Thornhedge by T. Kingfisher's lovely short novella. I'm, listen, I wanna prioritize getting to my novellas. So in this one, we meet Toadling. On the day of her birth, she was stolen from her family by fairies. She grew up safe and loved. The fae ask a favor of Toadling, return to the human world and offer a blessing of protection to a newborn child. Simple, right? But there's a knight who's like stopping totaling from doing anything. Listen, T. Kingfisher is becoming an author by author for me. Again, I have read three T. Kingfishers now and really, really enjoyed them all. I think her writing is something special, something unique. And so I love a bit of like dark fantasy fairy tale kind of book. I'm very, very excited for this one. Next category is nonfiction. If you watched my reading goals video, you'll know that a big goal of mine this year is to read more nonfiction, specifically 12, not taking into account memoir or autobiography, which a few of these are memoirs. So... Ooh. No, it was a mistake. But yeah, I want to read 12 nonfiction, which should be doable, right? This should be doable. It should totally be doable. Let's see how we do. So the first I'm putting on this list, I know I'm going to be reading this month. So it's a little bit cheating, but like, it's not cheating. If I know I'm going to be reading it, I should be allowed to put it on the list. And that is The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. Yeah, I love you, Britney. <laughs> I have heard nothing but great things about this. I know it's like partially ghost written, right? Or like entirely. I don't know. How much did Britney have to do with this? But I think it's still, you know, this woman's been through a lot and I am team Britney forever and always. Uh, death to all of them. <laughs> How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh. Oh. I'm really excited to read this and learn more about her life because I don't know a ton of it. I was very young when Britney was in like her heyday, like her most iconic era. Obviously I was born in 2000 and I feel like 
that's when she started really coming up was like early 2000s but I loved her music as a kid I probably just wasn't super aware of a lot of the stuff that was going on in her life but I loved her music I used to listen to her greatest hits album in the car with my grandparents all the time so yeah I'm very 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 excited to get to this I will probably get the audiobook as well I know it's not narrated by her but I have heard really good things about the audio and I'm just so team Britney that it's crazy, you know? Then another memoir that we have is In the Dream House by Carmen Maru Machado. I read, what is it called? Her Body and Other Parties, right? I read last year and I really, really enjoyed it. And I think this is more popular than that even. This one is more of a memoir of, I think, an abusive relationship she was in with another woman told through lots of weird lenses, right? It's told through different lenses. There's like Dreamhouse's world building, Dreamhouse's heat death of the universe, Dreamhouse's ambition. Like, I don't know, it's told through these lots of these short vignettes that have like a weird lens through them. I've heard nothing but good things about this. I think Carmen Rubichada's writing in the last book I read was just absolutely incredible. So I'm very excited to get to this one. And then we have three more traditional nonfiction. First is The Radium Girls, which I think is wrapped up. I couldn't find it. I'm pretty sure it's wrapped up. And this one is about The Radium Girls, who I think were working in some kind of factory and like they had to paint with radium and they like licked it and shit and then they all came very ill because you shouldn't be licking radium you know I've heard wonderful things about this non-fiction I love I love I love any kind of non-fiction that is about the history of women I love reading about women I love reading from about women throughout history and I just feel like this is a very important non-fiction that I've heard a lot of really good things about so very excited to get to that one then we have got bad gays a homosexual history I am very excited for this one I've heard mixed things I've heard mixed things a few people I know have been reading it and haven't loved it but I'm very excited it's basically about bad gays like gay icons but who are maybe a little bit evil <laughs> throughout history listen i love reading about the women i will also read about the gays throughout history you're so creative where do you get your inspiration um god and the gays non-fiction can languish on this tbr as we know for quite some time so i'm paying on this list and hopefully that means i will get around to it and then the last non-fiction list, list is one i'm a little bit nervous for because i'm nervous about how many spoilers this will have but i really want to read murder isn't easy the forensics of agatha christie by carla valentine this is basically about how agatha christie had like cutting edge knowledge when it came to poisons when it came to fingerprint analysis she was really like at the forefront of a lot of like crime scene investigation. I think she came up with the term, the scene of the crime. I think Agatha Christie came up with that. And she was also very re revolutionary in terms of her knowledge of poison. She, if you don't know, worked as a nurse. I think World War One, right? Yeah, in World War One, she worked as a nurse at her local hospital was housing a lot of injured soldiers. And there she learned a lot about poisons. That's how she had such good knowledge of it. So I really want to read this. I am just nervous about how much it's going to spoil. I don't want spoilers. I don't want spoilers. I'm reading every Agatha Christie book on this earth in my lifetime. I mean, it's going to take me like 60 years, but I'm going to read them all. And I'm just, I'm nervous about if anyone's read this, let me know how many spoilers there are in it. You know, like how in depth does it go into like, this is what happened in this book. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm fine with it telling me how a murder was done. I just don't know. I don't know who did it you know? So I'm a little bit nervous about that. But this has been on my TBR for a little while now and I always look at it and I really want to read it. It's just that spoiler element that's holding me back. But maybe I can read some reviews and, and find out because I think this is such a fascinating topic. And I love, I love reading nonfiction about authors I love, right? I love reading nonfiction about Agatha Christie. I love reading nonfiction. There's like, um, Lucy Worsley's got a book about Jane Austen that I really want to read. Like I love learning about my favourite girlies, you know? <laughs> so, and then our final category is just, other books <laughs> it's not really a simple categorization to these so um firstly we have got everyone in my family has killed someone by benjamin stevenson oh i think i'm gonna love this this was another one that was in my try chapter first video of the year it didn't make it but i still was super interested in it this is very meta there's a prologue where you are told everyone in my family has killed someone you're gonna find out how and the, on these pages murders are gonna occur and i'm gonna stick to the conventions of murder mystery writing it's gonna be a fair play murder mystery it's so meta i love it i love anything that takes the genre and twists it and like plays with it oh i'm so excited this is a five star prediction i think i'm gonna love it i part of me thinks i should have picked it for that first book of the year but like you know you never know I'm I just oh please don't make me think too hard about it because I don't know what I'm expecting and I just want it to be great this one makes me very very excited it makes me very very excited it's exactly what I want in a murder mystery and what I keep saying a book needs to do to get a five star from me now so I think it's gonna be a five star 
Another murder mystery that I really want to get to is The Village of Eight Groves by Shoshi Okamizo. So Shoshi Okamizo is basically the Agatha Christie of Japan. He's written so many murder mysteries through a particular detective like Agatha Christie has Poirot and this is the next in the series. They're slowly being translated into English. I have read the first two and then I own this one and another one and then I think maybe the fifth one has come out in terms of what's been translated into English and I just love these. Per personally as someone who loves murder mysteries it's fascinating to read murder mysteries from different cultures and see what conventions remain and which ones have been you know added and this one we're in this small hamlet of eight graves it takes its name from a centuries old massacre ever since that bloody day people say a terrible curse has hung over the village and I think there's poisonings that start happening I've really enjoyed all of the books I've read from Sushi Okamizo so far so I really want to get to another one this year then we have I mentioned Jane Austen we got Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen I'm definitely gonna be reading this this year absolutely absolutely if you don't know Emma I read last year and it was in my top 10 books of the year I absolutely loved Emma by Jane Austen and Pride and Prejudice is really what I have a history with. I read this when I was younger, I watched the Colin Firth BBC adaptation every time I was ill with my mum when I was off school. Mr Darcy? Listen, I was a weird kid, I also loved watching like the History Channel when I was off school as a kid. <laughs> like learning about Tudors. I loved Tudors and Victorians, I loved, I loved that kind of history when I was a kid. So. Pride and Prejudice is my bitch, you know what I mean? Like this is my home girl. Like we go back, we go way back. And so I'm gonna read it again this year, probably within the first few months of the year, if I'm honest with you. And I'm very excited to see how, what I know in my brain of the story matches up to what goes on in the book. But Jane Austen, oh, she's doing it for me at the moment. Emma was such a good book. I thought it was incredible. So excited to get to this one. Then one I really, really wanna get to is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I have only read the first Robin Hobb book. What was it? Royal, Royal, Assassin's Apprentice, apologies. <laughs> and Royal Assassin is the second one. I have watched so many people who have read like the entirety of Robin Hobbs, this whole world, right? And I'm at the beginning, but I would love to make some progress in it this year and read Royal Assassin. In the first one, where you're following Fitz, who is a royal bastard and he is trained to be with the animals and the dogs. I can't remember what's a spoiler and what's not, and he can kind of like speak to them. And we're following Fitz, right? And this whole series, I think we're following Fitz, maybe with a few breakaways into other circumstances, but this first trilogy definitely is all Fitz. And He's a little bit older, he's growing up, and I, oh, I haven't read a lot of like court fantasy lately. And I used to read a lot of that. I used to read a lot of court-based fantasy and I really do enjoy it. Like historical, you know, kings and queens fantasy. I really do enjoy it. And I think Robin Hobb is a great, great author. So I'm very excited to make some progress in this series. Then we have got The Floating Admiral by The Detection Club. So if you don't know, The Detection Club was a group of mystery authors during the golden age of crime. Agatha Christie was one, they put her at the top. Dorothy L. Sayers is another really well-known one. I'm trying to think if there's any other names you'll recognize. G.K. Chesterton, maybe some of you all know. Um, Anthony Berkeley, who wrote The Winching Hill Mystery, which I've read. They were this group of mystery writers and this is one of their books they published together. And I think they each write a chapter. So I don't know like if they just got the chapter, the previous chapters and were like, I'm gonna take it here or if they kind of work together on it. I don't know. I think it's such an interesting concept. Like this novel with a, with a through line, with like a plot, like it's one novel. It's not short stories, but they each wrote a chapter. So yeah, I definitely should be reading this this year because I was supposed to read it last year and didn't. <laughs> and then the final book on this list is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. This is one of those books that I have owned for quite some time now. I bought this in Leeds. That means I've owned it for over two years. Oh, don't look at me. <laughs> hey, Flop. Girl, you have done it again. Constant lowering the bar for us all. And I just want to read it. I've heard such good things about all of Angeline Booley's stuff. Is it Warrior Girl on Earth, her new book that came out last year? I heard great things about. So I just really, I really want to get around to this. Um, I think we're following a girl who is half indigenous. And so she feels like an outsider um, within the indigenous community. And then a murder happens and she reluctantly agrees to be part of a covert FBI operation into a series of drug related deaths. I have heard wonderful things about this. Again, I think it's quite long, which has been putting me off. Well, not, it's it's about 500 pages. It's almost 500 pages. Listen, Courtney Summers is blurbing on the back. Courtney Summers is blurbing on the back, who I trust completely. And I've just heard so many good things about this. So it's time, it's time that I finally read it. Okay, per my calculations, that should be 24 books. If it's not, mind your business. <laughs> there should be 24 books that I really want to get to in 2024. 
I believe I'm gonna read all of these. There's a few, the non-fiction could trip me up. Some of those last books like Plain Bad Heroines, I could see myself putting off for another year. Not through any fault of the book, just cause it's length, right? But I do really wanna get around to these. So let me know how many of these you think I'm gonna get to in the next year. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you think I'm gonna do. But yeah, I'm really excited to read all of these. So let me know your thoughts on any of them. Let me know how you think I'm gonna do. And I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye.